Warren, let's talk about some of the things that really resonated with people and, and, and maybe start where you began the annual meeting this year, and that was talking to your investors and telling them a little bit about investing, some tips and lessons along the way. You kind of used it as a teaching experience at the top. Yeah. Uh, normally, I don't do that. I mean, in fact, I can't remember when I did it. Uh, the We just go right into questions and answers. But uh, I really thought that that maybe we were giving a little bit the wrong lesson uh, because all the questions would naturally tend toward current events. And uh, so this time I went back, uh, actually, to 1942 when I bought my first stock as an illustration of all the things that have happened since 1942. We've had, we've had uh, 14 presidents, seven Republicans, seven Democrats. We've had... We've had world wars, we had 9-11, we had the Cuban Missile Crisis, we have, a, we have all kinds of things. The best single thing you could have done on March 11th, 1942, when I bought my first stock, was just buy an index fund and, 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 and never look at a headline, never think about stocks anymore, just like you would do if you bought a farm. You just buy the farm and let the, let the tenant farmer run it for you. And I pointed out that if you'd put $10,000 in an index fund that reinvested dividends, and I paused for a moment to let the audience try and guess how much it amounted to. And it would come to $51 million now. And the only thing you had to really believe in then is that America would win the war and that America would progress as it has ever since 1776. And that American business, if America moved forward, American business would move forward. You didn't have to worry about what stock to buy. You didn't have to worry what day to get in and out. You didn't, you didn't know the Federal Reserve would exist, <laughs> whatever it might be. And uh, uh, America works. Now, that is one timeless piece from Warren Buffett. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you how you can actually take advantage of index funds to grow your wealth, okay? I'm Nick, and on this channel, I talk about personal finance, stocks, money, and things like that, all right? And before we jump into the video, I would ask at this time that you hit the like button to support me. Also, subscribe to the channel so I can grow this community and have more people aware of this particular product, okay? Now, without further ado, I take it that you have hit the like button and you've subscribed. Thank you for that. Let's get into the video. So first off, let's have an overview of the fund. What's the Vanguard S&P? 500 exchange traded fund ticker VOO basically the fund invests in the 500 largest US companies now that means this fund mirrors the performance of the US market okay investing in the biggest largest 500 companies shows that whatever happens to those companies is fed into this index okay another major point you need to see is that it offers a very high potential for investment growth okay so it's more volatile than holding bonds so if i have some money i could invest in this fund or invest in bonds i would rather personally go for this fund because over time the performance will exceed that of bonds then again another thing to keep note of is this it's appropriate for long-term goals so for example you are in your 20s and you want to invest continuously to your 60s or you're in your 30s you want to invest continuously to retirement this is one of those funds that you can take advantage of to grow your wealth without the stress of picking stocks individually now let's talk about the performance of the fund okay now let's make an assumption that a relative of yours gifted you $10,000 in 2011, all right? And you place that $10,000 in this ETF in 2011. Today, you would have $45,269.45 as your wealth. And the reason is over time, that 10,000 would have compounded with reinvestment and growth of the ETF. So that's one interesting picture. So what this tells you is that the fund has performed quite well without stressing you to pick individual stocks, without stressing you to pay so much. We'll get into the fee and you'll see how cheap this ETF's fees are without, you know, bugging you with the different stock market stress that comes with it. So it's a passive way of investing and growing your wealth substantially. Now let's take some time to discuss the components of this ETF in further details, okay? So one thing you should know is that the fund seeks to track the performance of a benchmark index that measures the investment return of large capitalization stocks. 
So when you check the matrix, this is where the fund falls, okay? It deals with stocks that have large market capitalization, okay? That means big companies. And for those that don't know, market capitalization is the price of a stock multiplied by the number of shares outstanding for that stock. So it deals with large capitalization stocks that have a blend between value and growth, okay? So what's value? There are stocks that impliedly trade low. They look cheap relative to other stocks because they have value embedded in them. And what's growth? They are stocks that look like they're expensive because they have growth potential. That's just a very basic way of explaining it. Now, it sort of sits in the in between those two as a blend, okay? Now, this is where I really would love you to take note of. The equity diversification. One of the things you don't want to do is to over-concentrate in a particular sector. You want your funds to be as diversified as much as possible, especially if you're a beginner investor. Now, check out how diversified this fund is, okay? 27.8% is in information technology, okay? 13.4% is in healthcare, 10.9% is in financials, consumer discretionary has 12.1%, communication services 11.3%, and the likes. Now, what this does is to allow you get the benefits of each of these sectors without overly exposing you to any particular sector. So think of it like you getting the best of both worlds. You get into a restaurant and you are actually taking a piece of each of the items on the menu. I mean, that gives you a broad array of stocks to own indirectly. Now, let's talk about the 10 largest holdings. You have stocks like Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, and Facebook. Now, that's no wonder why you can see the large allocation to information technology, okay? And you have also Tesla, Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's company, interestingly, NVIDIA, JP Morgan Chase, which is a massive US bank, and Johnson & Johnson, which is into the consumer goods. So you see that spread in um, different stocks, different sectors, which is a very good point whenever you want to invest. Now, what about the fee? How much is charged you for investing in the Vanguard fund? Now, the fund charges an expense ratio of 0.03%. Now, when you think about it, it looks very, very small because it actually is. Similar funds charge on the average 0.83%. Now, a 0.8%, which is the difference between these two, is very, very material over a long period of time. And I'll show you how. If you check this illustration right here, fees on 10,000 invested over 10 years. If you had invested in Vanguard at 0.03% fee, and you had invested in another fund at 0.83%, the difference in fees would amount to $1,822, which is a massive amount. So it builds up over time, it stacks up over time. The cheaper the expense ratio, the more you can retain a lot of the growth you are getting in any ETF or index fund. Now wrapping up, why is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF one option you can invest in and literally hold forever. Several reasons. Like we said, the returns have been decent over time. We also spoke about the well-diversified portfolio. We spoke about the very low expense ratio. And I'll add a fourth point in wrapping up this video. In the event of a stock market crash or a correction or a pullback, whatever word is used, you will find out that the index fund would experience a lower level of losses compared to picking individual stocks. Some individual stocks can drop as much as 30%, 20%, 40%, but you hardly see the index as a whole dropping by that much because of the diversification across different sectors. So it's a way of protecting your funds rather than exposing yourself to just one sector or one stock. It's a way of hedging against that risk of concentration, all right? So that's it for this video. In subsequent videos, I'll be discussing other types of exchange traded funds or index funds. As always, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment in the comment section if you have any question, and come back for the next video. Thanks so much for watching.